In Buddhism, the term parinirvana (Sanskrit: parinirvana, Pali: parinibbana) is commonly used to refer to nirvana after death, which occurs upon the death of the body of someone who has attained nirvana during his or her lifetime. It implies a release from the samsara, karma, and rebirth, as well as the dissolution of the skandhas. In some Mahayana scriptures, notably the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra, parinirvana is described as the realm of the eternal true self of the Buddha. Nirvana after death In the Buddhist view, when an ordinary person dies and their physical body disintegrates, the person's unresolved karma passes on to a new birth, and thus the karmic inheritance is reborn in one of the six realms of samsara. However, when a person attains nirvana, they are liberated from karmic rebirth. When such a person dies, their physical body disintegrates and this is the end of the cycle of rebirth. Contemporary scholar Rupert Gethin explains, Eventually, the remainder of life will be exhausted and, like all beings, such a person must die. But unlike other beings, who have not experienced nirvana, he or she will not be reborn into some new life, the physical and mental constituents of being will not come together in some new existence, there will be no new being or person. Instead of being reborn, the person parinirvanas, meaning in this context that the five aggregates of physical and mental phenomena that constitute a being cease to occur. This is the condition of nirvana without remainder of life near upadasesa nirvana, and up adasesa nibbana, nirvana that comes from ending the occurrence of the aggregates skanda, kanda of physical and mental phenomena that constitute a being, or, for short, kanda parinibbana. Modern Buddhist usage tends to restrict nirvana to the awakening experience and reserve parinirvana for the death experience. Topic: <laughs> Parinirvana of Buddha Shakyamuni. Accounts of the purported events surrounding the Buddha's own parinirvana are found in a wide range of Buddhist canonical literature. In addition to the Pali Mahaparinibbana Sutta DN16 and its Sanskrit parallels, the topic is treated in the Samyutta Nikaya SN6.15 and the several Sanskrit parallels T99P 253C 254C, the Sanskrit-based Ekatara Agama T125P 750C, and other early sutras preserved in Chinese, as well as in most of the Vinayas preserved in Chinese of the early Buddhist schools such as the Sarvastivadins and the Mahasamgikas. The historical event of the Buddha's parinirvana is also described in a number of later works, such as the Sanskrit Buddhakarita and the Avadana Sataka, and the Pali Mahavamsa. According to Barreau, the oldest core components of all these accounts are just the account of the Buddha's parinirvana itself at Kasinagara and the funerary rites following his death. He deems all other extended details to be later additions with little historical value. Topic. Within the Mahaparinibbana Sutta Pali. The Parinirvana of the Buddha is described in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta. Because of its attention to detail, this Theravada Sutta, though first committed to writing hundreds of years after his death, has been resorted to as the principal source of reference in most standard studies of the Buddha's life. Topic. Within the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra In contrast to these works which deal with the Buddha's Parinirvana as a biographical event, the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra, which bears a similar name, was written hundreds of years later. The Nirvana Sutra does not give details of the historical event of the day of the Parinirvana itself, except the Buddha's illness and Kunda's meal offering, nor any of the other preceding or subsequent incidents, instead using the event as merely a convenient springboard for the expression of standard Mahayana ideals such as the Tathagata Garbha, Buddha Dhatu doctrine, the eternality of the Buddha, and the soteriological fate of the Ichantikas and so forth. Location of Gautama Buddha's death and Parinirvana It has been suggested by Waddell that the site of the death and Parinirvana of Gautama Buddha was in the region of Rampurva. I believe that Kasinagara, where the Buddha died may be ultimately found to the north of Bedia, and in the line of the Asoka pillars which lead hither from Patna Pataliputra. In Bihar. It still awaits proper archaeological excavation.
Topic: In Mahayana literature. According to the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra, also called the Nirvana Sutra, the Buddha taught that Parinirvana is the realm of the eternal, bliss, the self, and the pure. Dr. Paul Williams states that it depicts the Buddha using the term self in order to win over non-Buddhist ascetics. However, the Mahaparinirvana Sutra is a long and highly composite Mahayana scripture, and the part of the sutra upon which Williams is basing his statement is a portion of the Nirvana Sutra of secondary Central Asian provenance. Other parts of the sutra were written in India. Guang Xing speaks of how the Mahayanists of the Nirvana Sutra understand the Mahaparinirvana to be the liberated self of the eternal Buddha. One of the main themes of the MMPS Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra is that the Buddha is eternal. The Mahayanists assert the eternity of the Buddha in two ways in the MMPS. They state that the Buddha is the Dharmakaya, and hence eternal. Next, they reinterpret the liberation of the Buddha as Mahaparinirvana possessing four attributes, eternity, happiness, self and purity. Only in Mahaparinirvana is this true self held to be fully discernible and accessible. Kosho Yamamoto cites a passage in which the Buddha admonishes his monks not to dwell inordinately on the idea of the non self but to meditate on the self. Yamamoto writes Having dwelt upon the nature of nirvana, the Buddha now explains its positive aspect and says that nirvana has the four attributes of the eternal, bliss, the self, and the pure. The Buddha says, O you bhikkhus monks! Do not abide in the thought of the non-eternal, sorrow, non-self, and the not pure and have things as in the case of those people who take the stones, wooden pieces and gravel for the true gem of the true Dharma. In every situation, constantly meditate upon the idea of the self, the idea of the eternal, bliss, and the pure. Those who, desirous of attaining reality meditatively cultivate these ideas, namely, the ideas of the self Atman, the eternal, bliss, and the pure, will skillfully bring forth the jewel, just like the wise person." Michael Zimmerman, in his study of the Tathagatagarbha Sutra, reveals that not only the Mahaparinirvana Sutra but also the Tathagatagarbha Sutra and the Lankavatara Sutra speak affirmatively of the self. Zimmerman observes, the existence of an eternal, imperishable self, that is, Buddhahood, is definitely the basic point of the TGS Tathagatagarbha Sutra. The Mahaparinirvana Sutra and the Lankavatara Sutra characterize the Tathagatagarbha explicitly as Atman self. See also Parinirvana Day Prabhashvara Reclining Buddha Mahasamadhi Topic Notes Topic Sources Topic External Links Complete translation of the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra or PDF SNV. 15, Parinibbana Sutta Total Unbinding Maha Parinibbana Sutta, The Great Discourse on the Total Unbinding Article in the New York Times Buddha in Nirvana